Hello. <clears throat> Hello. The U.S.-China Cold War has negatively impacted the Chinese-American community with devastating consequences. Many Chinese-Americans live in fear for their personal safety and dread the idea that two countries, the United States and China, are getting closer to a real war. But in so many ways, war is already happening to them here in the United States. In 2020, 2021, anti-Asian hate crimes increased by 150%. To this date, hate crimes have not abated, especially in large cities like New York and San Francisco. In a 2024 report from Axios, one out of three Asians have been a victim of a hate incident. 59% of Asians believe they will be a victim of a hate incident within the next five years. In a new twist of sensationalism and China bashing, the Washington Post accused Chinese American communities of helping China to extend repression into American cities. On September 3rd of this year, about three weeks ago, a Washington Post article claims that at last year's Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, known as APEC, members of the Chinese American community helped China to export transnational repression into American cities. The Post falsely accused the Chinese American community groups who came out to welcome President Xi to San Francisco as being the aggressors in confrontations with anti-China protesters and that they did it under the direction of the Communist Party of China. The Post further alleges <clears throat> that it is all part of the Chinese government's shadowy plot to quash dissident Hong Kong and Tibetan voices overseas. What really happened was the opposite. At the APEC conference, members of the Chinese American community, including myself, went to welcome President Xi to San Francisco. We were already lined up informally to catch a glimpse of President Xi when members of the Hong Kong Democracy Council and Students for a Free Tibet entered the scene with tall flags and anti-China anti posters. They barged in and pretended to be victims, crying, don't touch me, don't touch me, when no one was touching them. These two organizations have been longtime beneficiaries of US taxpayers' money with hundreds of thousands of dollars of grant money from NED, National Endowment for Democracy, an offshoot of CIA for doing anti-China work in the United States. At the scene, these dissident, group, these dissident groups used tactics consistent with those used in the 2019 Hong Kong riots. They simply brought those top tactics here to the United States. They were the ones who transported repression to the United States against the Chinese American community. The tactics used in this demonstration were basically a toned down version of Hong Kong, only without thousands of rocks, umbrellas, and firebombs that they used in Hong Kong, which would get them shot dead on the spot by the US police, unlike the Hong Kong police. But the lies and the aggressors faking being the victims came from the same mode. The mainstream media here, like some of the ones in Hong Kong, was completely biased and continued to frame the rioters as peaceful protesters, taking their word and ignoring evidence to the contrary. In developing a story against the Chinese American community, astoundingly, the Washington Post deployed facial recognition to surveil Chinese American community members. Facial recognition is a faulty, imperfect method of providing evidence that is largely banned by courts. It is what experts call a science without forensics. Interestingly, Washington Post itself published an article in 2019 claiming that facial recognition is unreliable as it contained biases and errors. Chinese and African men are likely to be misidentified 100 times more than whites. Many states and cities, including San Francisco, have banned the use of facial recognition technology by their government, government departments. It is a scary thought that the US mainstream media is turning into a quasi 
police state in the U.S.-China Cold War. And by the way, the Post never reported that the only person being arrested on the scene by the San Francisco police and charged by the district attorney with numerous counts of serious felonies for beating up and seriously injuring a member of the Chinese American community was one of those anti-China demonstrators. Members of the Chinese American community who went to welcome President Xi were mostly older retired Chinese Americans who wanted to be a part of the historic moment when the two presidents, Xi and Biden met in San Francisco. The summit meeting represented a hope of peace between the two countries, a peace that would de-escalate the new Cold War and demonization of China, which produces much of the anti-Asian hate in this country. What they were doing was to show respect for the meeting of the two presidents and hope for a better future for them and for America. They were then not to transport regression or repression from China. They don't even know what that was all about. We were living in a renewed McCarthy period, and in some ways it is even worse. The demonization of Chinese Americans as a tool of repression upon the United States is another Cold War strategy to drive American people's hate towards China and thus give consent to war with China. The post use of facial recognition technology to surveil Chinese Americans is also a step up in the cracking down on all forms of peace advocacy, whether it be Black Uhuru Three trial for protesting the Ukraine war, white coping women protesting genocide in Gaza, whom Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi said, go back to China, or young university students being arrested and banned from returning to university for protesting Gaza, or Chinese American scientists being arrested under Trump's China initiative. We need to stand together to fight back against the tyranny of the media and unjust US policies that will lead us to war. Advocating for world peace is now more important than ever. Thank you very much.